What has the reaction been like from the actual artists and bands whose music you're essentially allowing people to change? It's been phenomenal. You know, it's one of the things that I was a little unexpected to me was the degree to which Fantasia, as a as a as a piece of media, as a piece of like cultural history, uh, actually played a, a really large influence in a lot of creative people's lives. You know, it's like parents who sit their kids down in front of this movie when they're young. They get into these worlds and they imagine themselves, you know, using magic to control brooms and do things and conduct the heavens and the stars and, you know, and almost to a, to a T, like every artist that we've talked to about this game has been really excited about playing a role. And, you know, it's it's been, it's actually been easier than I thought it would be, given how much, you know, license we want to give the player. But, you know, all the artists that we're talking to are psyched, you know, and it, it comes into these, you know, you get into these deeply philosophical questions about how people consume media as technology evolves, you know, and, you know, you sort of look at the way that people listen to CDs or records before that and the way they're listening to MP3s and the way remix culture is affecting the way that people interact with music. And I feel like there are musicians that are on the bleeding edge of that and then there are musicians who are resistant to that. And we're looking to ally with the former, you know, and, and really work with artists who, who want to give their music out to players to, you know, to do fun, interesting things with. And, you know, who knows what the future holds, but, you know, there are, there are a number of artists that are releasing content out in ways that are, you know, deeply accessible to, to creative people, and, and I feel like we're trying to tap into to that form of, you know, media consumption, if you will. What's it been like being able to go into the Disney archives and, and learn about Fantasia? It's, so the phenomenal thing about Disney as an organization is that they have a, a crew, like a, a huge staff dedicated to preserving the lore and the history that they have captured. And you know, it's one of the first things that I did when I uh, realized that I was gonna be able to work on this project was read the Walt Disney biography. And it's, you know, it's such a great story of American perseverance in all these ways. And, you know, you think about the films that he worked on with no money and, you know, it's like they were building technology in real time. They invented storyboards for Christ's sakes, you know. It's like there were things that they were doing back in the day that, you know, were like deeply creative with the vision of like a, a piece of media at the end, you know, whether that's Snow White or whether that's Fantasia or whether that's whatever, you know, that would change people's perspective on what animation could be. And so it, one, of the, one of the fun things that we were able to do was sort of, you know, after um, the success of Snow White, I believe, uh, Walt Disney hired an army of stenographers to take notes at every single meeting that he had, you know, and so you, they have these reams and reams and reams of documentation of, uh, meeting notes between Walt and Stokowski, who was the musical advisor for the film, and he's actually the guy directing the, you know, conducting the orchestra in Fantasia, uh, with the animators, you know, all of these stories where they're discussing the role of, you know, it's like, how abstract can our art be? You know, how cute can our stories be? Like, what's, our, what's the relationship between character and music or narrative and song? Where do things start? And it was this brilliant viewpoint into why they were doing what they were doing and and it, it actually helped us extrapolate some of the things that they were trying to do and and apply them to the technology that we're working in right you know motion video gaming and, and uh, you know we got into the the ARL the animation research library where they you know I think they have something it's stupid like 600 million pieces of art in there that they're still trying to scan and, and archive and you know it's like okay you type in you know magic and you get just sort of like every image of magic in the like history of Disney animation and it's like it's a, it's a phenomenal resource and for us to be able to go behind the scenes and check that stuff out was was huge even while very little of that actual art you know it's like we're sort of reinterpreting reinterpreting a lot of uh, a lot of what we saw but it, it it allowed us to really go deep into the hows and whys um, of kind of the original, the original idea.